Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to Transformation Ministry. My name is Pastor Anthony L. Walker, and we're located at 115 Kathy Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia, 30214. If you're in the Fayetteville area, please stop by and worship with us. If you don't mind traveling, we will accept you. Come on in. 1145, we begin prayer so we can get our hearts and minds right for the 12 noon service. So I'll uh, have a great message for you today. Uh, this message is let me uh, get this song. We were doing some praising um, uh, and singing, and I had the lyrics up on the board, but today's message is, is titled Standing in the Need of Prayer. And we were just talking about that before I switched over to do the broadcast, that we all are in need of prayer. I don't know anyone on this planet who should not be standing in the need of prayer because of the way things are. Even if you're blessed beyond you, anything you can imagine, you are still standing in the need of prayer. And so with that said, let's not, let's, why don't we just kick off the, this broadcast and this message with prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. You woke us up this morning, Lord God. It wasn't the alarm clock, Lord. It was you waking yes, us Lord. up, Lord, because some people alarm went off and they did not wake up. And so Father God, we are grateful, Lord God. We are grateful for all the small things, Lord God. And we're thankful and grateful for the for the mighty things that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And Father God, let us take nothing for granted, granted Lord. But we know that we need you, Lord God. I yes. pray that this message will do more than just con convict people's heart, will prick their hearts, but it will lead them, Lord God, to uh, a realization that we all need prayer in our, in our lives, Lord God. Yes. And so, Father God, um, we just ask that you bless each person. And I thank you, Lord God, for even taking time to hear us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When I was a small child, my mother had me and my sisters uh, to kneel down on our knees every night before going to bed. And uh, we would pray uh, with my mom at this bedtime. And it was something that I looked forward to. Uh, it provided me with comfort and assurance that God would protect me while I slept. And I may have been praying while down on my knees, but even though I was in the kneeling position, I was figuratively standing in the need of prayer. My pr uh, childhood prayer uh, went something like, uh, let me get past this. My childhood prayer went like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to take. And after reciting that prayer, this is what, you know, a kid's mind, we come in with like this. We ask Lord to bless mommy and daddy and our grandparents, our friends, our pets, and the whole world. You know, we wanted everybody to be blessed. And I carried this tradition on with my kids while they were young. I made sure that I would kneel down, uh, that we would all be on our knees at the bed prior to going to bed. So I did that when they were young, and I know that I have one granddaughter. I know my daughter would do that uh, with her. And so the Bible tells us to, in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so we need to instill prayer at a young age. And, and also to add to that, if we're training up our children in things that are not of God, we are still training them up in the direction that they will go and they will not depart from it unless the move of God come upon them. So it is parents' responsibility, it is friends' responsibility, it is anybody you know who does not have that prayer life or relationship with God, and they're especially children, we are to train them up. It don't have to just come from the household. They say it takes a village, you know, so we are to um, uh, train up our youth in the way they should go. And the way they should go is in the way of the Lord. Amen. So prayer is something that we should never depart from. You know, train them up so that they won't depart from it. Prayer is that thing that we should never depart from. Prayer is important. It is a necessity. Um, and it's personal. Prayer is very personal. 
Prayer is our line of communication with God Almighty, with our Creator. It's our devotion. <clears throat> it's our devotion to Him. So through our prayers, we express our joy, our sadness, our praise, and much, much more. Prayer touches the most inner depths of our being. There is a African American spiritual title. It's me. Uh, no, it's titled "Standing in the Need of Prayer." And these enslaved Africans created a genre of music that born was born out of the harrowing uh, experience of daily struggles, yet filled with the hope that God was in control and that He would deliver them out of their bondage. You know, they, the the slaves they used to sing a lot and. It, it, it did more than just <clears throat> to express uh, a, a song. There was always a message in that song. And there's a message in this song that uh, we're talking about, Standing in the Need of Prayer. The song became well known after its publication in the book of American Negro Spirituals in 1925. So there are many variations of the lyrics and the melody of this song but the song version I remember the most goes something like this. In fact, we were singing this during our praise today. Um, in the first stanza, it says, Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And then it goes on in the reframe to say, It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's a simple song, but it has a lot of meaning to it. It has a confession there that it's me, O oh Lord. And the song has more stanzas <clears throat> with the same melody. You have two, three other stanzas. It might be more with the other version. But the second stanza says, not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So I'm not going through the Amen. whole verse. Amen. But then the third stanza, not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord. It's keep saying, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And then the fourth stanza, and what I found, because uh, you can add whatever you want to this song, and it would be appropriate. Uh, not the stranger, not my neighbor, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So we're talking everybody uh, is standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord. It is I who need prayer. I need it for myself. I need it for my health. I need it for my finances. I need it for my family. I need it for this ministry. I need it for my relationship <clears throat> with God. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, reveals the personal and intimate nature of prayer. It is personal and intimate for me, and it should be personal and intimate for you. Amen. When the song says that it's not my brother or my sister, the preacher or the deacon, my father or my mother, the stranger or my neighbor, it is not saying that they are not in need of prayer because they are. We all are. Amen. I usually find myself praying more for others than I do for myself. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the song is saying that I should or we should not exclude ourselves from Amen. the need of prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we care. And, and my wife and I, when we pray, uh, when we're done and she wants to add anything, what she adds, she's praying for me because I omit it when I'm praying. I don't know why I do that. I'm trying to include myself more and more. <clears throat> but let me say this. As a minister, people sometimes ask me to pray for them. I'm having problems with my throat right now. <clears throat> there have been uh, occasions when certain people have asked me to pray for them. And I would respond with, no one knows the specifics of what you need prayer for more than you do. Uh, who better to pray for you than you? You know, prayers need to be specific. And you know more about your needs than I do. And so it is obvious that um, these people were standing in the need of prayer. And I was not trying to get out of praying for them because that's exactly what I was going to do. And that's what, what I always would do. Um, but however, I wanted to express the importance and the relevance 
of them praying for themselves. Everyone should be able to make their petitions to God uh, themselves. Someone once said to me, God does not hear my prayers, but he hears yours. And when I heard this, you know, I responded with scripture. In John 9, chapter 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. And I can see how my response might uh, may seem kind of crude or rude and insensitive. Sometimes I'm like that, but I'm trying to be direct. But it is was a calculated re, uh, response on my part to make a point. And that point being that if you believe that God does not hear your prayers, then according to scriptures, it could be because you are a sinner. And people, I don't know, a lot of ministers, they will hold back and don't want to tell someone that they're a sinner. But people are sinners. We all were sinners. We were born a sinner. Mm -hmm. or, or it could be because you feel like God doesn't hear your prayers because uh, maybe you're asking something that is not in his will. You know, not saying that you cannot be a sinner, but you're gonna, he's only going to respond to what's in his will, according to his will. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask <clears throat> anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that he desired, that we desired of him. So after hearing my response when I was talking to uh, this particular person, uh, they retracted their initial request or their statement that, and then they said that they did not really know how to pray a prayer that would get God's attention. So it was a confidence thing in there. And so I felt, I felt that uh, this person, uh, I felt they felt this way because uh, other people they've heard pray. They may have gone to a church or watched somebody on TV that's animated and on fire and dynamic and how they would pray. And they felt that uh, just because they had exciting and vitality and passion in their prayers and this person may not have because she wasn't comfortable in praying, uh, that equated to the, they equated that way of being all the animated and stuff as the way they needed to pray. And so I encourage them um, by explaining that prayer is conversing with God, Amen. no different from how the two of us was talking at the time. And that's what prayer is, just talking. And so um, I let them know that when I speak to a person, I don't just look at them and say, good morning. Ah, ha, ha. How are you doing? Mm. What you doing today? Hey, you don't hear me. No, I don't talk to them like that. No, I just talk to them in normal talk. So I let them know that they should talk to God the same way they would to a person in a respectful manner. You know, even in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. We have to have reverential prayer. We have to respect God. We can't come to him. We can come to him, but we have to come to him in a proper way. Right. So speak from your heart to be heard and listen with intent mm -hmm. by being still to hear. Amen. And when I say being still to hear, that should let you know that prayer mm -hmm. goes both ways. It's not, it's communication. So communication isn't just one person talking, even though mostly women, that's how it is. They're doing, uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to uh-huh and nod every once in a while, guys, you know, <laughs> but anyway, um, but this comes to mind. What if I do not know what to say when I try to pray? And some people, they just don't know what to say. What do I say when I just can't find the words? And sometimes prayer may consist more in groaning than in speaking or in tears rather than words. And I say that because there are many times when you don't know what to say and that you, you're weeping, you're sobbing. Um, let me put it this way. Have you ever sat with a friend, a close friend of yours, and you confided in them uh, your deepest, your most inner feelings? Um, and in doing so, for the most part, all you could do during the conversation was, was mainly just weep and just lean on them 
and allow them to comfort you while you poured out uh, your feelings to them. Sometimes prayer, in prayer we have to do the same thing, but we do that unto God. You know, sometimes, uh, but that's still, that's a communication, that's a comforting type prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we should be able to come to God. That's, that's intimacy, when you can come to God in that fashion, in that manner. So these prayers are the yearnings in relationship to God that are too deep for intellectual expression. Sometimes we just don't know what to say. God understands that language of a sigh or a groan or a moan. Uh, when we allow the Holy Spirit to intercede, on our behalf. And we can find this in scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, and that Spirit is capitalized, so we know mm -hmm. we're talking about the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. itself making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Just as we, we do. Sometimes we we, you know, I remember as a kid, I might be, <laughs> I can't even get a word out. And, <laughs> and, you know, but, you know, I'm communicating a lot that way. Is it? And mm -hmm. what your parents do, there, there. It'd be all right. And you ain't said a word, there, there. <laughs> so um, nothing is hidden from God. We couldn't hide things from our parents. Nothing is hidden from God. If you are feeling empty or if you are happy in your life, God wants to hear from you no matter what you are going through, no matter how you communicate it. He wants to be there for you when you are standing in your need of prayer. You are going to meet people who are also going to be standing in a need of prayer, but they may be unable or unwilling to pray for themselves, as in the case that uh, you just heard me talk about. Um, you may be needed to stand in the gap. When I say stand in the gap, I'm saying standing between God and that person uh, in the form of intercessory prayer so that you're, you're praying on someone's behalf. Just ask the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and on our behalf. So standing in the gap through intercessory prayer is something that should be uh, done more than on a single occasion. You know, you say, you know, pray for me. And so you pray for that person. And then, you know, some people, that's it. They don't give you another thought, uh, another care. Not saying that they don't care, but you ask for prayer. That's why it's good to pray for yourself. You ask for prayer, Amen. they pray for you, and then they moved on. Yeah. But you're still with your situation. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're going to truly intercede from someone, you know, it's, it's something that you do on one more than one single occasion. Intercessors should be... Uh, intercessors should be continuous uh, praying in the spiritual gap for people um, for that person who is standing in that need because they are still in that need after you do that prayer mm -hmm. uh, there is an acronym and that acronym is P-U-S-H pray until something happens just keep praying you may not see it right away but pray mm -hmm. until something happens and in the scriptures it says in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 17, uh, pray without ceasing. This scripture of three words, pray without ceasing, uh, means to not give up in your praying. It means praying continually, even when it does not even make sense anymore. Because you haven't seen anything, and you're like, this, maybe, maybe I shouldn't be praying for this. I don't see the result. But you do it anyway. That's, that's why it says pray without ceasing. It means not abandoning your faith, but constantly looking to God in all things. So we should pray without ceasing. What is a, an example of this? We look here in James chapter 5, verse 17, 18. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Elias prayed earnestly <clears throat> until he got the evidence of his prayer. Now we read in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4 to 4. And it says, And it came to pass, at the seventh time, 
the seventh time, that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare the chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. So a, a big torrential rain was on his way. And if he didn't get down, he could be stranded where he was. And so get your get in your car and get, because the rain is coming. Get out of Florida. Get out of uh, Louisiana, because <laughs> the flood water is coming. You know, so we have to um, be consistent in our prayer. Pray without season, uh, ceasing. Uh, Elijah prayed the same thing again and again. And this was not a vain repetition, you know, because it says, you know, without vain repetition. Mm -hmm. This is not vain repetition, but he was praying with faith and with meaning. Praying without ceasing is being consistent and persistent. Don't let anything stop you in your praying. Don't let anyone convince you that why are you still praying for that? You know, just because we don't see anything yet. Just continue to pray. Uh, so be persistent in seeking God's will, repeatedly praying without stopping until something happens. Amen. And when it's you, it's you standing in the need, apply that same push <laughs> strategy to your own personal prayers. You know, sometimes we, we, we might pray more for others again than we do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, the struggle is real. When you encounter struggles of your own, remember to seek God first. Seek him through your prayers. It seems like uh, in today's society, we do just the opposite. And I, I, I witness this all the time. Um, when we have a problem, we want to come up with our own solutions. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to solve it. But when our ideas cannot fix our problems, then and only then do we turn to God as a last resort. I had a friend of mine, we were talking, and I said, why don't you pray about it? He said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I think I'll pray about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this first. Mm. And I'm like, go ahead. Do it backwards. Put the yeah, cart before amen. the horse. Amen. Waste yeah. your time. <laughs> Waste your time. And then he got to me, man, can you, can you pray for me? You know, because he said, man, my way ain't working. And it's yeah. right, you know, exactly. put God first. Mm -hmm. Pray first thing. Put them in your prayers. Allow God to work. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, yeah, seek God first. After seeking God for answers, uh, trust in the answer that he provides. Allow God to handle the situation and have confidence in what he tells you. Because, let's look here. There's a quote by Thomas Merton. It says, what is the use of praying if at the very moment of prayer, we have so little confidence in God that we are busy planning our own kind of answer to our prayers? And sometimes we're guilty of that. Yes. See, you got to have confidence. And sometimes people think that God does not hear their prayer. But remember what I said about that. Maybe you're a sinner or maybe it's outside of his will. But God hears our prayers. They can manifest into miracles. I've seen it. I have so many testimonies of, of watching God do so much with so little for so long that I cannot be a skeptical of it because I watch God work. There are things on this side of heaven that only the move can only be moved by God's hand. Amen. You know, we can't we can wish and and cry and try uh, with our own hands and we can't move it. We can't shake it. But only God can do it. Amen. Do not take for granted the privilege and the ease of access that we have, of the access that we've been granted to God Almighty. You know, because it used to be that uh, we no longer have to, to have those strict rules and, and do animal sacrifices to enter into the presence of God. And it wasn't all of us who could do it. It was only the high priest that could even do that part. But we did the the sacrifices for forgiveness of sins and things like that. But now we can go to God ourselves, the great almighty, and ask God for forgiveness. We can do that every day. Amen. You know, repent, repent every day. Amen. All things, small, great, what have you, just, but be sincere. And don't look at it as a get out of jail free card, you know, just because God knows your heart. <laughs> so you have to uh, be earnest in that you want to change your ways. Um, 
So yes, we all are unworthy. We are all unworthy to come into the presence of God. We're not worthy. Uh, just as the Old Testament people, they, they were not worthy. Uh, the difference today is that uh, Jesus did what he did to compensate for our lack. You know, so now we're still not worthy, but we still have access. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, my, my friend, Pastor George, I like to hear him say, he says it often. He say, we're never going to be sinless, but we should sin less. Yeah. Because, you know, when you become one of God's, you know, we're still human. But now we got the Holy Spirit, you know, our ever-present help, our comforter with us. Um, and so if, you, if you're one of God's people, you're going to sin less. You're not going to actually do it and uh, continually do it. The power of personal prayer is made possible through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He paid the sin debt and granted us access to the Father through reverential prayer. So we come to God respectfully and pray and according to his will, God will hear our prayer and he Amen. will answer them. But you have to sometimes we come to God expecting and wanting and demanding a yes to whatever we come to him with. But God knows us better. It's like when you go to your you as kid, you go to your parents asking for something you know uh, you probably know you need, but they knew it wasn't good for you. They would bless you with a no, you know. And so God has to do that sometimes. He has to bless us with a no, or He may tell you not now, but just wait, or He may say yes and, and grant it to you. So let's look at um, this scripture here in Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I, was, I wasn't saying thanksgiving because thanksgiving is around the corner. I was saying thanksgiving because, you know, we have to be thankful for you know, Amen. enter when we enter and enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. You know, so we have to be in the right mind, the right spirit when we approach God, too, just as they did in the Old Testament. You know, we have to come to him the same way. So, um, our prayer life surpasses memorizing scriptural verses. Some people they can they know every scripture, every verse, mm -hmm. but still, you can't tell it by the way they live their life. Um, our prayer, it should exceed our con confession of sins. You know, some people go into a box and they confess to a, a man. Uh, that's, they can't forgive your sin. No, uh, it's beyond our praise to God. Prayer is a never-ending relationship conversation with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Our relationship with God starts with prayer and continues until we are with him in paradise. And I still hope we get to meet God. When I say face-to-face, -face, I don't mean literally, except yeah. for Jesus Christ. You know, that's the face-to-face -face what we can. But like right now, face-to-face -face with God through prayer is, is figurative, but still, it's that is that that one-on-one, -on -one, that intimate conversation with God. I'm going to tell you, if you don't pray, try it. And you may struggle when you start because you're not used to it, but just, just do it. Get along with yourself. People say prayer closet. They're not talking about it. Get in there with your clothes. But get into an intimate place like your bedroom or something. Close the door. Mm -hmm. Get on your knees or lay on, lay, on, lay on the floor. Whatever you want to do, but be sincere and honestly, earnestly try to connect with God and just cry out. If you cry, if you're a big old burly man, don't, don't try to hold it. We all are the same inside. Yes. Cry out to God. That's when when did God uh, when when was there a move of God in the in the Bible when people cried out to Him? That's when you have a move of God. He would change your life. Amen. Yes, so, when you are standing in need of prayer, remember this: prayer is when the voice of man enters the heart of God. When we enter God's presence through prayer, we enter into a place where pride is abandoned. Hope is lifted and supplication is made. Prayer links humanity with divinity. It brings down the forces of heaven to earth. Prayer puts God to work. It puts angels to work. It puts men to work.
Amen. 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 So if you, or if it's you, if it's you who are standing in the need, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer right now, right where you are, and just repeat after me. I'm going to put it on the screen, but uh, just repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of prayer. Father God, Father God, I am grateful that I can talk to you. I am grateful that I can talk to you. Thank you for allowing me to come into your presence through prayer. Thank you for allowing me to come into your presence through prayer. I want prayer to become more and more a part of my life. I want prayer to become more and more a part of my life. So that each and everything I do, so that each and everything I do, would be a prayer that ties me closer to you. Would be a prayer, a prayer that ties me closer, closer to you. you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a hand, clap of praise. So y'all just remember, prayer, pray without ceasing. Okay, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. And, um, you know, just hope to see you next week. Or I hope you see me next week if you can't be here in person. So God bless you all. And um, looking forward to it. Thank you to everyone. Thanks, everyone. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.